a better Christian and a better servant of the Most High with Pastor Kumi's messages on consecration and enjoy God's fullness in life and ministry. Messages available in consecration series include Thirsting After God, The Life That Pleases God, Our Consecrated Service to the Lord, Striving to Enter the Kingdom, Secrets of Fruit Bearing, Consecrating the Little Things, Essentials of spiritual growth, consecration and submission to God's will, complete consecration. Messages are available in DVD, VCD, CD, MP3, tape, and MP4 formats. For further inquiries, contact Life Tips Limited, 3 Ayodele or Kelvo Street, Magadan, Lagos, PMB 1004, Yaba, Lagos, Nigeria. Email lifetapes.hq at deeperlifeonline.org. Telephone. Remember, a message a day keeps the devil away. Almighty God, we thank you, thank you because you're always present with us every time we come over here. I thank you for all the brothers and sisters, the men and the women, boys and girls, that's where they are hearing the word of God at this time. We're praying, O oh Lord, that this word will energize, empower, and prepare us for the coming of the Lord in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that this word you are sending to us in your power and in your love will reach out to every heart and will receive everything you are giving to us in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, as a result of studying the word together today, you give us clearer understanding of your word and help us to prepare for the coming of the Lord because we know the next event we're expecting now is the coming of the Lord. And we pray every one of us will be watchful, will be prepared, will be ready, so that when the Lord shall come, none of us will be ashamed or disappointed in Jesus' name. And enrich every life with the study of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can be seated. It will come to the study of one verse of scripture. It's a verse of scripture you are familiar with. As I'll be teaching and revealing the word of God to you, will be a kind of remembrance, a reminder. Because if you've been coming for a long time, you know a verse of scripture. Not only that, some of the things I'll be saying. Although it will be a reminder unto you, it will also be a challenge unto you. Because as you hear the word of God, you'll be examining yourself. You'll be asking yourself, do I have what it takes to be ready for the coming of the Lord? And for some of us, it will be totally new. You'll be hearing this for the first time. And even though it is new, you can plug in into the word of God. And the word of God you are hearing coming to you for the first time can so empower you, energize you, stir you up that you take a decision that you say, I am going to walk in the direction that the Lord has laid down in the world. And the pattern of purity and holiness the Lord is showing up. And then you will pray and receive the strength of the Lord and the grace of God to be what you ought to be and to live the life you ought to live. We're in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. That's what follow. Pursue peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Practice peace with all men and live in holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Be a peacemaker and follow after the things that make for peace. Peace with all men 
and then be a possessor of holiness and live in that holiness because without that holiness no man shall see the lord follow christ the prince of peace follow peace with all men look at christ as your picture and look at christ as your pattern and look at christ as the one that mentors you and he says follow me why am i following you because you need to follow peace and i came to demonstrate how to live in peace and he is the prince of peace follow peace with all men follow the perfect example of christ the prince of peace and then follow the pattern of the life of the lord jesus christ because the life of jesus demonstrates and describes for us the life of holiness if you didn't even know anything at all about the word of god and you just have the picture and the pattern and the practice and the lifestyle of jesus before you follow peace follow the prince of peace how will christ act how will christ talk how will christ relate what fellowship will christ have how will christ interact he is the prince of peace if you follow christ in everything in your relationship in your action in your thought in your interaction with people you'll be following peace because you are following the prince of peace and holiness the life of christ was a life of wholeness it was complete you know there are people that might appear strong on one side and they're very weak on the other side there are some people that have some great virtues on one area in one area but they don't have some other important virtues in other areas that's not holiness holiness is wholeness all the virtues of godliness revealed all the virtues of righteousness described and demonstrated and as you follow the wholeness of the life of christ you are following the holiness of the pattern of the life of christ you will be following that holiness without which no man shall see the lord now when it says without which no man shall see the lord is giving us a condition and it is god's condition for dwelling with him dwelling with him now and dwelling with him all through eternity the single unchanging demand of god from all his children in all ages is that we should be holy he commands us to follow peace with all men and he commands us to pursue and to practice and to live in holiness without which no man shall see the lord if we are going to see him or if we are going to remain in eternal fellowship with him on the last day we will need to maintain holiness of life and holiness of heart without that holiness and without the virtues that compose holiness without the virtues that come together to make up holiness we will not be able to see the lord through holiness leads to the following virtues and goes along with all these components we spell it out h is humility you know what that means follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord follow peace with all men and humility without which no man shall see the lord you know when we just say holiness 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 we can sing it we can shout it loud and long and we can repeat it a lot of times but what is holiness holiness is humility without holiness without humility no man shall see the lord psalm 138 in psalm 138 I'm reading verse 6, Psalm 1, 3, 8. Verse 6, Though the Lord be high, yet I see respect unto the lowly, unto the humble, but the proud he knoweth afar off. 
he keeps the proud people afar off without humility then no man shall see the lord without holiness no man shall see the lord without humility no man shall see the lord oh is for obedience what are we saying what's the bible saying without obedience no man shall see the lord and you know sometimes when you just say without holiness no man shall see the lord really you don't understand what it means is without obedience no man shall see the lord what is holiness holiness is obedience to the word of god it may be you are not very much educated and it's a little child that helps you and reads the bible to you when that child reads the bible to you although the message is coming from the child but it's coming from the almighty god in the word of god through that child if you belittle that child and minimize the message because it's a little child giving it to you and you do not obey then you are not holy because without holiness without obedience no man shall see the lord in jeremiah chapter 7 verse 23 jeremiah chapter 7 verse 23 but this thing i commanded them saying obey my voice and i will be your god and ye shall be my people and walk ye in all the ways that i have commanded you that it may be well unto you you see what the lord is saying there it says the condition that you'll be in fellowship with the almighty god is obedience obey my voice it will be well with you obey my voice and then i'm going to bless you i'll have fellowship with you without obedience no man shall see the lord l without love no man shall see the lord you understand now when we say without holiness no man shall see the lord without humility no man shall see the lord and without obedience no man shall see the lord and without love no man shall see the lord you know a man may think he's holy when there is no love it's harsh it's haughty it's high-minded he has hatred in the heart and yet because he knows some verses of the bible and he puts those verses together and he says yes i have it he may be talking about holiness but you know if you don't have love you don't have holiness in first corinthians chapter 13 first corinthians chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 1 first corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 though i speak for the tongues of men and of angels and have not love charity there and become as sounding brass and tinkling symbol and though i have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and do i have all faith so that i could remove mountains and have not charity i am nothing and do i bestow all my goods to feed the poor and do i give my body to be burnt and i'm not love it profited me nothing what are we learning without love no man shall see the lord i is for integrity integrity what's integrity see what god said about integrity in job chapter one job chapter one verse eight and the lord said unto satan as thou considered my servant job that there is none like him in the earth a perfect and an upright man one that feareth god and is true evil what were the qualities of life that almighty god pointed to in the life of job number one he was a perfect man number two he was an upright man number three he was a faithful man he feareth god number four he ran away from evil but look at look now at chapter two verse three chapter two verse three and the lord said unto satan as thou considered my servant job that there is none like him in the earth a perfect and an upright man and one that feareth god and is truth evil 
and still he holdeth fast his integrity. What's integrity? Integrity is perfect heart plus upright heart plus fearing God plus running away from evil. That's integrity. Because God gave all those four things and then he summed everything up by sin. He holdeth fast his integrity. Although that moved me against him to destroy him without cause without integrity no man shall see the lord that's what the lord is telling us without holiness no man shall see the lord without humility no man shall see the lord without obedience no man shall see the lord and without love no man shall see the lord without integrity no man shall see the lord new life new man new creation that's for end and you find it says in second corinthians chapter 5 second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 therefore if any man be in christ it's a new creation it's a new creature it's a new man all things are passed away behold all things are become new what are we learning without a new creation without a new life without the new birth without newness of heart newness of habit newness of life no man shall see the lord you know it is not enough to say i believe in holiness where is the evidence because without the new life and without the new birth and without the new nature and without the transformation the recreation taking place no man shall see the lord and then he is entire consecration entire consecration in hosea chapter 10 verse 2 hosea chapter 10 verse 2 their heart is divided now shall they be found faulty their heart is divided a personal heart is divided he gives a part to the lord and a part to the world a part to the lord and a part to sell his heart is divided he is faulty in the sight of god and what god needs before you can see him is that you come with your whole heart they will seek me and they will find me when they will search for me with all their heart when you lay everything on the altar and with all your heart you're seeking the lord and you're living for the lord and you're pleasing the lord in psalm 101 psalm 101 verse 6 mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land they that do, they, they, that they may dwell with me he that walketh with a perfect in a perfect way he shall serve me that's the entire consecration the lord is expecting from you and from me without holiness without entire consecration entire yieldedness entire surrenderedness unto the lord no man shall see the lord yes without self-denial no man shall see the lord in mark chapter 8 mark chapter 8 verse 34 in mark chapter 8 verse 34 and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also he said unto them whosoever will come after me let him deny himself whosoever will come after christ follow christ follow holiness let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for whosoever will save his life shall lose it whosoever will save his life shall lose it but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake whosoever shall lose his life for my sake he said those are the people and for the gospels the same shall save it i don't want you to just read too many verses of the bible without asking yourself in recent times what have you given up for the lord what have you lost for the lord what is that thing that is very important 
very essential to your life that you give up that you surrender what is it other people are holding on to and you could have been holding on to it too but because of the gospel because of the kingdom of god and because of christ for the sake of christ you decided i'll give it up my right i'll give it up what others are holding on to i'll give it up what other people are holding on to and they say this is my life i cannot do without this for the sake of christ for the sake of the gospel i'll not fight for my right i give it up that self-denial is what's required in holiness without that self-denial no man shall see the lord it tells us also the separation from the world in james chapter one james chapter one i'm reading to you from verse 27 in james 1 verse 27 pure religion and undefiled before god and the father is this to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted unstained undefiled from the world chapter 4 verse 4 ye adulterers and adulteresses know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with god whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of god without holiness no man shall see the lord without separation from the world no man shall see the lord that's what the lord is teaching us the lord is telling us holiness is a practical thing holiness of heart holiness of life purity in our lives and without that inward holiness expressed outwardly outward holiness to you no man shall see the lord we divide the message to three parts number one the call to holiness number two consecration for holiness number three consistency in holiness the call to holiness if you look at first thessalonians chapter four First Thessalonians chapter 4. What do you need from verse 3? First Thessalonians chapter 4. Reading from verse 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. This is the will of God even your sanctification that you should abstain from fornication verse 7 for god has not called us unto uncleanness but unto holiness god has called us unto holiness not unto uncleanness and as you look at various parts of the bible and you look at various chapters and verses in the bible you are going to see the call to holiness number one it's a divine call it's a call of god this is not denominational call and this is not a preacher's call and this is not a ministry's call and this is not you know some people say holiness is peculiar to that denomination holiness is peculiar to that man he emphasizes it he preaches it it looks like that's his favorite subject no number one is a divine call number two it's a direct call everyone that came to the lord the lord told them be ye holy it came to them directly and the moment you come to the kingdom of god you are going to discover the spirit of god bringing that war from the lord almighty and giving you that direct call number three is a declared call you see it's declared in the pages of scripture and all the people that god sent to emphasize the life of god in man or the life of christ in man they came out with a proclamation they came out with a declaration he calls us unto holiness it's a declared call number four is a distinct call a distinct call you see many people will say i am called that's a general call that's a general call god called moses to deliver the children of israel that's a call 
and God called uh, Joshua to take them to the land of, of land of Canaan. That's a call. And God called David to take care of Israel as a nation. That's a call. God called Jeremiah to take care of the children of Israel, of fruits and then plant. But the call to holiness is a distinct call. This is the singular call and the important call and the indispensable call that gets you ready for heaven it's a distinct call number five is a desirable call what call do you expect which one do you desire a call to uncleanness a call to immorality a call to useless life a call to a worthless life which kind of call do you want a desirable call the call to holiness number six is a deliberate call God plunged it. God thought it through. Heaven is holy. God is holy. Christ is holy. The Holy Spirit is holy. And the church must be holy. And God was very, very deliberate according to his nature. He has called us unto holiness. Number seven, it's a daily call. You wake up in the morning and the Lord and you are asking the Lord, what's my duty today? What am I to do today? And God says, the first thing you need to understand, this day I'm calling you unto holiness. It's a daily call. Every time you wake up, the way you live your life, the Lord is telling you every day, be ye holy because I am holy. Let's look at this call from the scriptures in Leviticus chapter 11 verse 45. Leviticus 11 I'm reading from verse 45 For I am the Lord that bringeth you up Out of the land of Egypt To be your God Ye shall therefore Therefore, therefore, therefore Because I brought you out Because I redeemed you Because I saved you Because I delivered you Because I broke your yoke Therefore be holy for I am holy. You see that call of God? It says, because of what I've done for you, and because I've broken your yoke, and I'm taking you out of captivity, the call is coming to you, be holy. In Leviticus chapter 20 verse 7. Leviticus chapter 20, we're looking at verse 7. Sanctify yourselves therefore, and be ye holy for i am the lord your god sanctify yourself therefore and be ye holy because of your denomination i said is that because of your denomination is that because you are coming to deeper life you know sometimes you see some people they don't understand it's like you know uh, when you are going to a school a you then you carry your books you go to school and then you read and then you leave school A, and you are not going to another school, school B. And then you are not reading anymore. And somebody asks you, why are you not reading? Are you still not a student? Yes, I'm still a student. But I left school A, I'm now in school B. And because I'm in school B now, we don't read in school B. No! If you're a student, whether you're in school A or B or C or school X, Y, Z, you still must read the same thing. If you're a Christian, if you're a child of God, if you're in a church, denomination A, be holy. If you leave that denomination A and you go to denomination B, be holy. If you're a child of God, if you're still born again, if you want to see the Lord on the final day, we are not holy because we're in deeper life. We're not holy because we'll be disciplined if we didn't live a holy life. We're not holy because somebody is, uh, you know, making noise and shouting, all oh, be holy, be holy, be holy. We're holy because we're children of God. It says, I redeemed you, I delivered you, I brought you out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, be holy because I am holy. He tells us in verse 8, and ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. First Chronicles chapter 16. In First Chronicles chapter 16, we're reading from verse 29. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 29. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering. And come before him 
worship the Lord in the beauty of, of what? Holiness. Now as you look at this verse, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. There is no church. There is no denomination that will openly say, we don't want to give glory to God. In fact, some of them will even use the word glory. Glory tabernacle. Glory, the assembly of glory. And then they say, the lifting of the glory of God. And when the singers and the praise worship team, when they want to sing, they say, come on now, we're going to sing. Everybody, we're going to sing to the glory of God. Every church understands that we need to give glory to God. Look at the next part. The next part says, bring and offering. Every church, they bring offering. Because, you know, there's a part of the service. When they will say now, as we glorify the Lord, as we praise the Lord, as we worship the Lord, we're going to worship the Lord with our offering. Everybody, nobody shall come empty-handed. Everybody bring an offering. But the verse doesn't stop there. How oh, you see that we do the first part, want to give glory to God. We do the second part, and then we want to bring an offering. And then it says, so worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Why do we forget that last part? Don't you know that that last part is very important? And in fact, it is that last part that gives value to the, to the two parts that you did before. If you say you are giving glory to God and you are not worshipping, living in the beauty of holiness, all the glory you say you are giving to God means nothing to God. If you bring an offering and you are not holy unto the Lord, all the offering you are bringing means nothing. It is that last part that many people forget and it is that part of holiness that brings value to every other thing that we are trying to do before the Lord. And then it tells us in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23 and verse 24. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You see the language there. The language is a language of command. It's a call. The language is a command. It's, it's like an imperative. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that she put on the new man. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Is created in righteousness and true holiness. First Peter chapter 1. The call to holiness. First Peter chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 14. As obedient children, as humble children, as loving children, as children with integrity, as newborn children with new life, as children that have entire surrender, absolute surrender, consecration unto the Lord, as children having self-denial, as children holy unto the Lord, as children denying themselves, and as children separated from the world, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former laws in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Be ye holy, for I am I'm holy. You know, as you're talking about holiness, there are people, number one, that doubt it. They doubt holiness. And they doubt whether it's ever possible for anybody to live a holy life. Even though they doubt it, you know it's in the word of God. Push all their doubts aside. And come before the Lord and say, Lord, I know this is your word. I will be holy. Number two, there are people that disbelieve it. They read it in the word of God. And they just say, I don't believe. They may read about Enoch. I don't believe. They read about Daniel. I don't believe. They read about Paul the apostle. I don't believe. Why don't you believe? Those are men of like passions as we are. There are people that doubt it. There are people that disbelieve it. Even though this, this believe it, it is still in the word of God and it is declared unto us from Genesis Revelation. Therefore, accept it and live by it. Other people disregard it. 
uh, they, they preach every other thing and there are preachers that disregard holiness and they may preach for a whole year and never mention anything about holiness but even though they disregard it you know that this is the condition the lord has given us if you're going to see the lord on the final day number four other people even disdain it or discredit it they will not just leave it alone just doubting it they will not leave it alone just disbelieving it and they will not leave it alone, just disregarding it they even come out outright and they disdain it and discredit it and he said, no, nobody can live a holy life. If anybody says he's living a holy life, let, let him come here. And I will disprove him that he is not right. And there are people that will say, okay, church, here you are today. Raise up your hand. You say you are born again. If you have never committed fornication after you are born again. Huh. What kind of thing is that? And what kind of preaching is that? Other people will say, if you tell me you are not a sinner raise up your hand and that you have not committed sin since you became born again what kind of question is that they disdain holiness and they discredit holiness when god says something is possible it is possible and if you say it is impossible when god says possible and you say impossible you are in unity with the devil you are united with the devil you are in association with the devil you are affiliated with the devil and if you are a friend of the devil my friend when jesus comes you'll stay in the great tribulation over here i've made up my mind i'll be a friend of jesus and jesus said be ye perfect for your father in heaven is perfect i will agree with jesus and almighty god said abraham walk before me and be thou perfect i'll be in agreement with the almighty god if you want to be in agreement with the devil i beat you because when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in christ shall rise and we which are alive will be caught up together to be with them in the air i will be gone when the saints are marching in not when the sinners are marching in did you ever hear any church sick when the sinners are marching in I said, did you ever hear any church sing when the sinners, who are the people to march in? When the saints are marching, that's holiness. And when the saints are marching in, if you are holy, if you are righteous, if the blood of Jesus has cleansed and washed you, you will go in with them in Jesus' name. All the people disobey each. They doubt each. They disbelieve it. They disregard it. They disdain and discredit it. They disobey it. Other people dredge it. Once they hear the topic, we're dealing with holiness. They become afraid. Why are you afraid? Is it not the same God who saves, who also sanctifies? Is it not the same God who sanctifies, who also heals? Is it not the same God who heals, who also delivers? Is it not the same God that makes us holy, that also gives us all the miracles we need? Why are you, why are you dreadful? Why is it that you are afraid when you hear about holiness? Other people deny it. They deny it. They act as if it's not even in the Bible at all. They deny it. But the Lord is telling us, this watch of God it will last forever and this word that the lord has given us is a definite word and it's the word of holiness and we're going to stand by it in jesus name i'm calling upon you then defend it declare it and demonstrate it demonstrate it as holiness in the heart you yourself be an example and be a pattern of holiness in the heart number two holiness in the home if you are going to defend it if you are going to declare it if you are going to demonstrate it when we come to your house the arrangement of your house the things we see in your house the behavior in your house the interaction in your house husband and wife in the house parents and children in the house declare holiness demonstrate holiness holiness in the home holiness in the household of faith as we come to the church the church is called the household of faith as we come to the household of faith interaction between brothers and sisters in the house fellowship 
interaction between men and men, women and women, and men and women demonstrate and declare holiness in the household of faith. Demonstrate holiness in your office. Let the people in your office know that this one believes in holiness and it stands for holiness. Holiness in the office and then holiness everywhere. Holiness on the highway. You know, sometimes if you want to know the difference between a sage and a sinner, watch them on the highway. When drivers are driving, sometimes you don't know the difference between a Christian driver and an unbelieving driver. And there should be a difference. There should be holiness demonstrated, holiness described, holiness declared on the highway as the drivers are driving. And you should live a life and show that you are different from all the other people. If the other people are off and you are off, where is the holiness? If the other people want to cause accident and then you want to retaliate and cause accident, where is the holiness? Where is the humility? Where is the obedience? Where is the law? Where is the integrity? Where is the newness of life? Where is that entire consecration unto the Lord? Not my will, but I will be done. Where is the self-denial? And where is the separation from the world? If as the drivers of the world are driving, you are driving the same way to you. Let us demonstrate holiness on the highway. I told you that we are to defend it. And we are to declare it. And we are to demonstrate it. Holiness without hypocrisy. You see, when we have holiness, there will be no hypocrisy. Did Jesus ever say that the Pharisees had holiness? Never. You cannot have holiness and hypocrisy in the same heart, in the same life. Let us demonstrate it. Holiness without hypocrisy. And then holiness without haughtiness. Holiness without pride. You see, if we have fortuneness and pride, there's no holiness. Holiness is a practical thing. The way we live with one another, and sometimes it's just between husband and wife. And maybe the wife is pointing out something, my dear, it can this seem be right? The way you acted, and the way you did, and the way you handled this and handled that, and the way you are handling money, uh, can this be right? I'm the husband. Why are you talking like that? Don't talk to me like that. I'm the head of this home. Ah, holiness without pride. Holiness without haughtiness. Holiness without harshness. The way we talk to one another, harsh, coaching critical criticizing one another holiness without harshness you see the lord is telling us our holiness should be demonstrated it's holiness with humility it's holiness with honesty holiness henceforth and forever we will have it i said we'll have it and the lord will help every one of us to possess it and to demonstrate it in jesus name I come to point number two. Consecration for holiness. Consecration for holiness. Now when we talk of consecration for holiness, I want you to think about what is consecration by the way. Because that's another word we mention very often in our church here. Consecration, consecration, consecration. And then we're wondering, but what is consecration? Number one, consecration is rebuilt in marriage. When a lady comes and a man comes and they stand before the officiating minister and then they ask the man, do you take this woman as your lawful wife? And the only woman you are going to stay with? And she says, I do. Will you take care of this woman and love her as the only person very dear to your life? I will. That I will. That's the consecration. They ask the woman also the same question. And she says, I will. That I will. She leaves a lot of things behind. Her own family name, she drops that. Her career, she may have to drop that. A lot of other things she may have to drop. And her preferences, she drops everything because she says, I will. That's consecration. I want you to look at Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. 
I'm reading from verse 2. For the woman which has an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law, from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another, another man, she shall be called an adulteress. She has broken the covenant. She has broken the consecration. Consecration is you bring yourself, your heart, your mind, your past, your present, your future, your life, your career, everything you have. You say, Lord, I will. I give everything to you. That's consecration. And when you consecrate for holiness, it means for making up your mind. I consecrate my lifestyle, whether for better or worse, sunshine or rain. I will. That's consecration. It is not holiness that changes with the weather. It's not the holiness that changes with the dry season and the rainy season. It's a holiness that says, I am committed to this holiness. I am devoted to this holiness. I am totally abandoned and submissive to this holiness. I set myself apart to this holiness. I told you now that when you come into that covenant, that consecration, is the I will. And when you say I will, there's a part of it that I will not. In the marriage, in the marriage proposal, in the marriage ceremony, in the marriage covenant, you know, this man might have had a lot of Christian friends before, acquaintances. They knew one another. Not that they were committing sin together, they knew one another. And he loved all the women, all the ladies equally. But now, they come to marriage covenant. And the man says, I will take this woman. When he says, I will take this woman, also he said, I will not rate other women like this woman. This man is not very special. The same thing the woman says, I'm taking this man. I will. And that also means, I will not relate with other men that like I'm relating with this man. Look at it now when we say consecration. Let me show you one side, I will. The other side, I will not. Let me show you, I will. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. And she bowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, and will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will. I will do what? I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no result uh, come upon his head. That's consecration. Consecration. I take that child. I've not got the child now. That's what I told you. Your past, your present, your future. Samuel was still to come in the future. If you will give me this charge, that's future. I will give this charge unto you. That's consecration. Once you tell the Lord, I will. Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, nor to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will. I will go. That's still future. Where you are going in the future, I lay my life down. I will, I will go. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. And thy people shall be my people, and thy God shall be my God. I will. Once to say that I will, that's consecration. I want you to look at Esther chapter 4. In Esther chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 16. Consecration means I will. Esther chapter 4. Verse 16, go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also will, I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so I will go unto the king which is not according to the law. If I perish, I perish. That's consecration for better for worse. 
I give my life. I will. If you say you, are, you have consecration, I'm asking you, what have you surrendered to the Lord? What have you given to the Lord? And you give that thing to the Lord for better, for worse. That means you give it to the Lord. Whether people punish you for it, whether people misunderstand you for it, whether people criticize you for it, whether you lose anything by it, I will. I give it to the Lord. How many times do you find a young man and a young woman and they come together in marriage and they make a consecration like that, I will. And then some of their friends, they don't agree with them. They say, how is it, is that lady you married? I don't agree that you should have married that lady. But I was led of the Lord. No, we don't agree that that was the leading of the Lord. And then they might be quarrels with you because of it, but you have made your consecration. And you do not go away from that consecration just because so and so does not agree. The same thing here. Esther said, I will go to the king. If I lose my life, I lose my life. If I perish, I perish. That's consecration. When we talk about holiness, you come to the Lord and you consecrate yourself unto holiness. And you say, Lord, I surrender. I'm going to be holy. When I get to the office, because of this commitment to holiness, because of this covenant of holiness, because of this consecration of holiness in the office, they're going to fight me. But it's for better or worse. When I say, I am not going to agree with them in giving bribe or taking bribe or kickback or 419 fraudulent service, I'm not going to do anything like that. I know it may bring some repercussion, but it is consecration. And the consecration is for better or for worse. I'm looking at Psalm 27. In Psalm 27, reading verse 4, one thing have I said of the Lord, and that I will seek after. That's consecration. Wants to say, this is the one thing I'm giving my life to. And no matter who agrees or who disagrees, and no matter who favors it or who opposes it, this is my will, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. I'm looking at Psalm 39 verse 1. Psalm 39 verse 1. I said, I will take heed unto my ways, that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. That's a covenant. That's a consecration. I will. Look up here. It's like you sit down and you're asking yourself, since I became a Christian, what is the area of my life that has gotten me into trouble most? Then you think and think, you say, it's my mouth. I talk too much. And sometimes I say something, I have to go to my friends and apologize again. Now, I am making a consecration because of this holiness. Now people are going to misunderstand me. They're going to say, you look very quiet today. Are you fighting with people? Why are you now quiet these days? You're no more talking like you used to talk. Are you offended because we did something? You say, no. This is consecration. This is covenant. And it is consecration unto holiness. I will take heed to my ways. That I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle. It's a covenant, it's a consecration. In Psalm 102, Psalm 101, rather, Psalm 101, verse 2. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Anytime you see, I will. That's consecration. You shall remember the marriage consecration or the marriage covenant. You are telling the Lord, this is what I will do now. And it is for better or worse. People are going to misunderstand your action. They are going to misrepresent you. They are going to misunderstand your behavior. Because they have not taken their own covenant. A married man is different from a, 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 a single man. 
a married woman is different from a married a, a single a single lady you see the point is this now that you have had this covenant with the lord he has not had that covenant with the lord you have come before the lord you have made consecration unto holiness and maybe you have some people who are walking in the same office with you they're not coming to this church they're going to another church and maybe they worship god maybe they give glory to god maybe they give offering but they have not made consecration unto holiness but you have made a consecration unto holiness you are married unto holiness and you said you pronounced it i will they didn't pronounce that and because you said i will your lifestyle will be different you know a married man he just got married and he used to stay out late till 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock in the night when he wasn't married. Now he's married. He has somebody at home. And because he has said, I will, he rushes back home. And the other fellows who are not married said, but we are still here. And it's still, it's not too late yet. It's only 11 o'clock. And we can still go home at 1 o'clock. You say, yes, I understand. Because you are still single. I've said, I will. And because I said, I will, I must go home now. The same thing with holiness. They have not made consecration to holiness. You have made consecration and said, I will. And because of their will that you have said, that's why you are different. In Psalm 119, Psalm 119, verse 106. It tells us here, I have sworn this consecration. And I will perform it. That I will keep the righteous judgment. I will. That's consecration. And then I told you, consecration has to pass. There is, I will, on the one hand. There is, I will not, on the other hand. You see, when you make consecration, that consecration has a positive side as well as a negative side. There is, I will not, Genesis chapter 14, consecration. In Genesis chapter 14, I'm reading to you from verse 22. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lit up my hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread, even to a shoe lashes, and that I will not take anything that is thine. Lest thou shouldest say, I made Abraham rich. That's, that's consecration. When you make up your mind, I will not and what you know conditions will change temporarily you might be hungry and then you remember i said i will not i will not take anything from that unbeliever and now you are in need but you understand consecration for better for worse when i'm satisfied when i'm not satisfied when i'm provided for when i'm not provided for i have opened my mouth unto the lord and i will not alter it that's consecration abraham said i will not and if you have not done that you don't understand holiness when you consecrate for holiness there is on the one hand i will on the other hand there is i will not in first samuel chapter 24 for samuel chapter 24 i'm reading from verse 10 consecration for holiness First Samuel chapter 24, verse 10. Behold this day. Then eyes have seen how the Lord had delivered thee today into mine hand in the cave. And some bade me to kill thee. But mine eyes feared thee. And I said, and I said, I will not put forth mine hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. I will not. That's consecration. And this is for better, for worse. Do you understand that Saul was running after David? And Saul wanted to kill David. And it wasn't easy for David. Persecution is not easy. But you see, when you make consecration for holiness, it's not everything that will be easy. Although Saul was running after David, wanting to kill him, this day now, he saw him in the cave. And Saul was sleeping. And one of the men of David says, See, the man is sleeping. Now, he will not know anything. He will not even have to do it. Let us kill him. And he said, There's consecration. Consecration for holiness. I will not touch the Lord's anointed. 
but he's persecuting you well he doesn't have the consecration that you will not touch an innocent man i have the consecration i will not touch the lord's anointed that's consecration when even it appears inconvenient for you but because of your consecration you say i will not and then in first chronicles chapter chapter 21 first chronicles chapter 21 i will not i will not first chronicles chapter 21 we're looking at verse 24 in first chronicles chapter 21 reading verse 24 it says and the king and king david said unto onan nay but i will verily buy it for the full price for i will not take that which is thine for the lord nor offer burnt offerings without cost it says i want my service to be sacrificial and i want to feel the pinch the inconvenience of that sacrifice i will not offer anything to the lord that's an offering of convenience i'm going to sacrifice something to the lord that pinches me that pays me i pay the price that's what the lord is telling us we pay the price it's not going to be totally convenient you know sometimes if you're a lady and the, the way you dress as a christian when you dress like that for one week or for one month and the people that knew the way you used to dress before they look at you and, and you are feeling you feel bad you feel belittled and you feel humiliated and you feel as if they're, they're saying that all kind of dress is this the way they look at you and the shape of their mouth and the way they talk about and the way they criticize you that's a prize but you have made up your mind you say yes i understand you have not taken the consecration i've taken and you have not been to the bible study i went to you have not read the verses i read in the bible and i've made up my mind i will not offer any sacrifice to the lord that cost me nothing that's consecration for holiness i will not it tells us in job chapter 34 i will not job chapter 34 i'm reading from verse 31 job 34 31 surely it is meet it is suitable it is right to say to be said unto god i have borne chastisement i will not offend anymore that's consecration for holiness you are deliberate about it and then you come before the lord will say you want to consecrate remember consecration has two parts from the illustration of the marriage i gave you first part i will second part i will not and here this man said i will not offend anymore you know in your life this one talks to you and says you offended me another one said why did you talk to me like that the other time yeah, i felt offended another person came to you and said i felt offended then you look at your life you say can all these people be wrong are they judgmental everybody the way i talk to them the way i relate with them everybody is saying you offended me you offended me you offended me is everybody wrong and i'm the only right person something is wrong then you go back to the lord you say lord i want to renew my vow i want to renew my consecration now my consecration number one i will number two i will not i will not offend anymore that means you don't enjoy the offense and you don't enjoy everybody telling you every time you are stepping on my on my toes and you are inconveniencing me and you are doing something that is hurting me you don't want that anymore therefore you go to the lord and you make consecration to the lord i will not offend anymore but 32 that which i see not teach thou me if i have done iniquity i will do no more that's consecration i will do no more you see when you talk to the lord like that you are laying everything down and you are consecrating yourself to the lord Psalm 101 in Psalm 101 i will not as an expression of our consecration Psalm 101 verse 3 i will search no wicked thing before mine eyes I will search no wicked thing before mine eyes. Now, you understand that David was in the world when there was no television. 
if there was television in the world and all those polluted uh, uh, you know pornography all these things were there he would have said uh, he would have mentioned television but because there's no television he said whatever it is whether people dramatize it or people demonstrate it or people describe it if it's a wicked thing and if it is something that will influence my emotion influence my action influence my attitude in the simple defining negative direction i will set no wicked thing before me that's consecration you make your consecration you see when you are getting married it's not other people that will make the consecration for you even when you are getting married and you are and you are dead and dumb but you can see you still make signs to show i will you still make signs to show i will not and if you are now getting married to the lord and you are getting married to holiness there must be that moment in your life when you make up your mind and when you make the consecration i will on the one hand i will not on the other hand it tells us in that verse 3 i hate the work of them that turn aside it shall not cleave to me then he tells us in for samuel chapter 15 for samuel chapter 15 verse 26 in first samuel chapter 15 verse 26 and samuel said unto saul i will not return with thee samuel said unto saul i will not return with thee isn't there some benefit when we associate with a king is there not some benefit when we associate with a governor of a state is there not some benefit when we associate with a director of a great big wealthy company there may be some financial gain but when you have consecration and you realize that this director this manager or this highly placed person that he has rejected god he has gone the negative way and god is angry with him because god is angry with the sinner every day you come to the lord you say lord i know this is going to cost me something when you dissociate from a highly placed person who is influencing you in the wrong direction you may lose some money you may lose some physical natural privileges but this consecration i will not return with thee for i have because it says in numbers 26 for thou hast rejected the word of the lord and the lord has rejected thee from being king over israel psalm 119 verse 93 119 verse 93 i will not in psalm 119 verse 93 i will never forget thy precept what a consecration i will never i will not allow the joy of the place i'm walking now the joy of having many friends i have not allowed that to make me forget myself and forget my consecration i will never forget thy precepts then it says for with them thou hast quickened me now you understand consecration better and it tells us that we consecrate ourselves for holiness psalm 118 in psalm 118 verse 27 god is the lord which has showed us light bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar bind the sacrifice on the altar with the cords. that tells you then you make up your mind i will on the one hand i will not on the other hand and then you bind that thing with your word and because binding for you because it's your consecration for holiness number one our call to holiness number two our consecration for holiness number three now consistency in holiness consistency in holiness if we understand consecration very well and the consecration is in place and we always remind ourselves what we have opened our mouth to say i will on the one hand i will not on the other hand and we bring everything together and then it becomes the power the energy and the very focus and the very foundation of everything we do in life 
when I opened my mouth and I told the Lord, I will. And then I said, I will not. If I allow that to be the principal thing and the focus, the foundation of my life, then I'm going to be consistent in holiness. And you know, sometimes uh, if you're not careful, you might forget yourself. And then you pray, you tell the Lord, Oh Lord, now I understand. You have called me. This is a definite call. This is a divine call. This is a di distinct call. I respond, I come. I accept this call. I give myself to you. Holiness will be my watchword. Holiness will be my lifestyle. Holiness will be the very foundation of my thought and my heart. And then you consecrate and you say, Lord, I will. And you go through all those I wills that I read to you. And then I will not. Then you wake up tomorrow morning. If you want, the, if you want to understand and live by that consecration in a consistent way, you wake up in the morning, you go over it again. Oh Lord, I will. I will. I will. And then I will not. I will not, I will not. And then you say, Lord, help me today to live a day at a time so that, Lord, this consecration to holiness will be something firm. Let me ask you. Somebody got married just the other Saturday. After the marriage, and then she said, I will. I'll keep to this man. I'll keep to this woman. After that time now, Immediately they got back home that Saturday after the marriage. The man said, thank you, my dear wife. Now we are married. I need to go out and visit. And then she goes out to visit the other ladies that she was, he was familiar with before. And then right there, you know, they start discussing and she starts, and all that she wants to, he wants to discuss about his plan, about his life, discusses with them before even talking to the wife. That consecration marriage will not stand. It will break up in a few weeks, in a few months. Or maybe it is the, it is the, the, the man that will say, you know, uh, you must understand. This album, very, very precious to me. All the pictures that he took with uh, other ladies in the past. And all their letters. I love you. I appreciate you. You are a nice man. You are this and that. You know, he reads and reads and reads every day. The I will of the other Saturday will not stand. You know what I'm telling you when you come to the Lord and you tell the Lord, I will in holiness. I will not because of holiness. All the other relationships that will contradict the covenant and the consecration you have made, you break them. You destroy them. You throw them away. You wake up the following morning. You say, Lord, I remember what I said last night. I will. And I'm still standing by that consecration. I will. Then you do it the following day. You do it the following day start to be holy you're renewing that consecration every time and you're living by that consecration every time they will be consistent in our holiness and from this time we shall be holy i said we shall be holy consistency in holiness let's look at the scriptures in genesis chapter 5 genesis chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 21 Genesis 5, 21. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat me to sell her. And Enoch walked with God after he begat me to sell her 300 years. And he begat sons and daughters. And we are told in verse 23, and all the days of Enoch were 360 and 5 years. And Enoch walked with God. And he was not, for God took him. That's consistency. 300 years. You see, how is that possible? Let me ask you, how is it possible that you chew, you, you brush your mouth every morning for the whole year and you didn't miss out any, any day? How is that possible? Oh, you say, but that's, I do it every time. It has become a habit. How is it possible when you are born, you are given water to drink and every day you are still drinking water? How is that possible? It became a habit. How is it possible now, before you go out in the morning, you always take your bath? There are some people that don't take their bath every morning, but you do it every morning. How is it possible? Consistency. When you start something, at the time you start it, it might look difficult. It might look inconvenient. 
but you discipline yourself and actually it's the first uh, it's the first five minutes that might look inconvenient let's say for example you are a person that before uh, you know before you have made this consecration if anybody said anything to you and it uh, went the wrong side in your mind you talk immediately and you'll say no i won't take that i won't take any disrespect from anybody i will not take insult from anybody that's the way you used to be but now you make consecration i will keep my mouth with a bridle especially when the wicked is before me and then somebody is saying something to you you remember your consecration you say for better for worse humiliation or glorification they belittle me or they praise me i'm not going to break my consecration because of this individual it will be convenient for the first five minutes and the fellow keeps on shouting and ranting and doing what and you keep calm and then you are telling yourself i will keep my mouth with a bridle you are not even hearing everything is saying because you are repeating to yourself your consecration i will keep my mouth with a bridle lord jesus you are inside me here it was possible for you not to live a holy life you must make it possible for me i'm not interested in falling and rising falling and rising this one i'll not reply this man at this time you will overcome i said you will overcome yeah. and then the following day another person comes again they come with their trouble because they know this is the area they always get you and then as they talk you remember again i will not i will bridle my mouth and while they talk and talk and talk you are talking to god in your heart and you are talking to yourself i remember our consecration i will I submit myself to the Lord and I will not reply this man. By the time you practice that and do that for about a week, if anybody comes, you know, after two weeks now, their kind of a cuisine will be weak in your mind. It will not affect you anymore. And then you become consistent. And if you live victoriously for one week, the following week you live victoriously, another week you live victoriously, within one month you are going to be victorious. And then two months you are victorious. And then three months of victorious, and people begin to recognize they don't see you as a noisy talkative of the past. They say it's a quiet brother now, it's a quiet sister now that becomes your habit. And then they even begin to copy you now because that consecration to holiness has taken root in your life. It will happen in your life. That's what happened to Enoch. And he lived this victorious life. We will live the victorious life. In Joshua chapter 11 verse 15. Joshua 11 verse 15. It tells us, As the Lord commanded Moses, his servant, so did Moses command Joshua. And so did Joshua. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. That's consistency. This man Joshua, he just followed the word of God. Living a day at a time. You know how he did it? This, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. How did Joshua live the consistent, holy, righteous life? By meditating on the word of God. You see, look up here, brothers and sisters. You cannot meditate or think on two things at the same time. Let's say, for example, now you woke up in the morning. When you woke up in the morning, you remember the word of the Lord to Joshua. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Everywhere you go, every place the soul of a foot shall tread upon, I'm giving it to you. I am with you. And then you leave that place now and you are meditating. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. This almighty God, this great God, I will never leave you, I'll never forsake you. In the time of temptation, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. In the time of challenge, in the time of poverty, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. You are meditating on that thing, and then somebody comes. And as he comes, he insults you. If you then leave the word you are meditating on, and you now meditate on this, uh -uh, this fellow insulted me. I am older than this fellow. I knew the Lord before this fellow. I helped this man before. And with all the good things I've done to this man, see the way he's insulting me. Now you are meditating. You left because you cannot meditate on two things at the same time. You have left the word of God. As you are meditating, they insulted me, they trampled on me, they belittled me. Look at what they did to me. And you are turning that and turning that in your mind, you'll get angry. Because of what you are thinking about, that's why you are going to get angry. 
But if when the fellow insulted you and did whatever he wanted to do, you are still meditating on what you are meditating on, I will never leave you. God is my friend. And God is greater than 1,000 people. If 1,000 people insult me, Almighty God that is greater than 1,000 people, He says He's my friend, He's my father, and He's with me, and He's going to help me. If they are not going to help me, this Almighty God is going to help me. While you are meditating on the word of God like Joshua did, you'll be consistent in holiness. It will happen in your life. Joshua chapter 24 verse 31 consistency in holiness Joshua chapter 24 verse 31 and Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that overlived Joshua and which had known all the works of the Lord that he had done for Israel they were consistent all the days of Joshua and even they outlived the people that lived after Joshua they were consistent in holiness if they could do it we can do it in first Samuel chapter 12 consistency in holiness for Samuel chapter 12 from the latter part of verse 2 verse 2 and I have walked before you from my childhood unto this day behold here am I here I am witness against me before the Lord and before his anointed whose socks have I taken whose eyes have I taken of whom have I defrauded of whom have I oppressed or of whose hand have I received any bribe to blind mine eyes therewith and I will restore it and they said thou hast not defrauded us nor oppressed us neither hast thou taken out of any man's hand consistency Samuel was consistent if the Lord will help him the Lord will help us in Daniel chapter 6 I'm reading from Daniel chapter 6 verses 3 and 4 then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find no occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful. Neither was there any error for found in him. Consistency. Daniel was consistent. If God helped all these people, can he not help us? He can help us and he will. In Job, in Job chapter 17 verse 9. Job chapter 17 verse 9 the righteous also shall hold on his way and he that has clean hands shall be stronger and stronger we can be consistent because that's the promise of the Lord will continue in holiness I said will continue in holiness in Luke chapter 1 let's see this uh, husband and wife and let's see how to old age they were consistent in holiness and righteousness in Luke chapter 1 verse 5 there was in the days of Herod king of Judea a certain priest named Zacharias of the cause of Abiah and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth and they were both righteous before God that's holiness that's consistency in holiness even though they didn't even have a child at this time and they were already stricken in age old in age they were walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless possible for them it will be possible for you in first Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 first Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 notwithstanding she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue that's a secret every day at a time that will sum up to a week and then two weeks and then one month and then one year and then many years if they continue in faith in charity and holiness with sobriety holiness with sobriety first thessalonians chapter 2 first thessalonians chapter 2 to be consistent in holiness in first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8 so being affectionately desirous of you only to have imparted unto you not the gospel of god only but also our own souls for ye because ye were dear unto us for ye remember brethren our labor and travail for laboring night and day because we will not be chargeable to any of you 
we preached unto you the gospel of God. And ye are witnesses, and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behave ourselves among you that believe. Look at these people. They live in a consistent way, holy, just, unblameable. And the grace of God is still available today. He did it in them. He will do it in you. He will do it in us. It is possible. I said it is possible. The grace that brings salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. And then that we live soberly, godly, righteously in this present world. The blood of Jesus will cleanse us. And Christ has the power. Every weakness in your life, the Lord will bring. Holiness unto the Lord, that will be your lifestyle. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. We can be holy. He has called us to be holy. And we can consecrate ourselves to be holy. And then we become consistent in that holiness. Brothers and sisters, open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Don't let the devil cheat you at this time now. This is the time to call upon the Lord. Now you understand consecration for holiness better. You tell the Lord, I will. That's your consecration. I will not. That's your consecration. Surrender yourself to the Lord. And say, Lord, I yield myself to you. I come to a marriage covenant with Christ. I want to renew my covenant with Christ. My covenant with holiness. Let him do it in your life. Let him do it in your life. Don't allow anything to pull you back. You tell the Lord, I will. And after you have made your consecration to the Lord, whatever others do, Whatever others say, however others live, whatever other people practice, however other people dress, wherever other people go, that will not be your concern. Lord, I will. And you live your life sober. You live your life gentle. You live your life holy. You live your life dedicated, surrendered, submissive to the Lord. And when that holiness is put in place in your heart, in your life, there will be humility to you. There will be obedience to the totality of the word of God. A step at a time. A step at a time. Obedience to the Lord. And there is love in your heart. You love the Lord with all your heart all your soul and all your mind you love the lord with your substance you love the lord with everything you do and you concentrate you focus on the love of god you are not distracted by what other people do by what other people say you love the lord without that love holiness will not be complete integrity integrity you follow the lord with a perfect heart you follow the Lord with a humble spirit and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom to depart from evil and the way of iniquity you are still you are shun you reject you abandon you abstain from every appearance of evil new life will be there new lifestyle a new language, a new gentleness, a new behavior. You'll be a new creature in Christ. That's holiness. There will be entire consecration. Your heart will not be divided. You will not be dividing yourself between self and the Lord. The language will be, not my will, then be done, O Lord. Entire consecration, absolute surrender unto the Lord. 
You yield yourself completely unto the Lord. Self-denial. The flesh will demand something contrary to the will of God. Self-denial. People will like to push you to something contrary to the will of God. Self-denial. Every day you practice that self-denial in your life. Separation from the ways of the world. Now you take the way of the cross. And it's that way of the cross that leads home. Respond to this call. A divine call. The call is coming to you. Lord, I accept. Lord, I receive. I accept this call. Coming to you directly. A declared call. You see it in the word of God. And because you see it in the word of God, you stand by each. You accept it. A declared call. Say the seat call. You will not mix this call with other calls. This is special. This is distinct. Desirable call, deliberate call the Lord is giving you. And a daily call. You wake up daily in the morning. Oh Lord, I hear the call today again. I will be holy. Lord, I hear the call again today. I will be righteous. Lord, make me holy. Purify me through and through. He will do it. Yes, he will do it. As you respond to the call of the Lord, you consecrate yourself. You surrender yourself completely to this call. I will. I will give myself unto you. I will. I will go where you want me to go. I will. I will go before the king and I will do what you want me to do for better or worse. Whether it is convenient or it is not convenient, I'm not looking for convenience anymore. Lord, I will. I will bridle my mouth. I will control my tongue. I will serve you with a perfect heart. I will yield myself completely unto you. I will have respect unto your precepts. And I will not. I will not take anything from the king of Sodom. I will not. I will not touch the Lord's anointed. I will not. I will not offer anything to the Lord that cost me nothing. I will not. That's your consecration to holiness. I will offend no more. I will not do anything anymore that other people count as offense. And I will not set any wicked sin before me. Lord, I will not. I will not go on with, with, with King Saul. Anyone who has rejected the Lord will not be my bosom friend. I will not. Pray that the Lord will help you to be consistent in holiness. In a watch day after day for many years, 300 years, consistent in holiness. You can be, you can be. The same grace available to them. That same grace is available for you today. I about Joshua. The Lord helps him. And the Lord can help you. And the Lord will help you. And all those elders that lived at the time of Joshua. The Lord helps them to be consistent in holiness. And the Lord can help you too. Just lay yourself on the altar before the Lord.
let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn within your heart. And let the blood of Jesus wash you whiter than snow. And the Lord will accomplish what he accomplished in Samuel. What he accomplished in Daniel. What he accomplished in Job. What he accomplished in Enoch. What he accomplished in Paul and his colleagues. The Lord will do it in your life as well. It is grace. By strength. It is power. You'll be able to continue in holiness until he comes. He has given us the promise and his promise will never fail. Hold on to those promises. Believe the Lord. He will accomplish in you what he went to the cross of Calvary to die for. Faithfully see what's called you, who also will do it.